Good morning, AI nerds, and welcome back to fabulous Denver, Colorado. My name is Savannah Peterson, and we're here on the Cube streaming live. This is day three of four. It's been a thrilling show. This is our analyst analysis segment to get us kicked off. I'm joined by Lisa Martin and John Furrier. Lisa, your smile is just lighting up the set this well, morning. Thanks. It's your first supercomputing. What do you I, think? I love it. The energy is phenomenal. I lo especially when I was walking in this morning, it was I, I got kind of re energized about all the influence and participation yes. of academia here. I know. It is I so fun to students. see that. NASA's here, the NSA is here. We've got a bunch yeah. of logos behind us. That we do, lots of, lots of university logos behind us. And it was just, it's so nice to see not just the inclusion of academia, but their active participation and their active use of HPC, AI, yeah. and how it's really infiltrating and influencing every other industry out there. Totally, it's applied. It's not just yes. a conversation or a hypothetical, which I think is awesome. Yeah. I was just checking out the numbers this morning. There's over, <clears throat> there's over 10,000 people here. You can tell. I mean, the show floor is huge. I watched. I walked over six miles yesterday just inside the building, looking at all the exciting projects. And another interesting data point here: over 50% of the attendees are interested in quantum. So we, that while there is a huge conversation around AI, I mean, I would say 100% of the attendees are interested in AI in some capacity. I think it's cool to know that we are seeing such a, a saturation of people interested in both of these technologies to do more faster. John, chips a huge conversation, yeah. both here, I know there's some news going on, tell us. Well, the, the story here, supercomputing is all about more horsepower, high performance computing, which basically is infrastructure, chips, um, and we've been saying on theCUBE all week, and the theme is chips meets cloud and everything in between is going to get innovated up and, and refactored. Um, and Microsoft's having their big event, mm -hmm. uh, their conference, annual cloud conference, and the news is they're announcing more chips. So, surprising, and guess what? It's AI related. So, Shocking. Um, they have a couple things. They have an accelerator with their Azure stack, uh, Mia 100, and also the Azure Cobol CPU. Um, so again, this just talks about more and more what Microsoft's doing. Uh, again, Microsoft building their own chip, co-designing inside the house. You're starting to see people go fabulous on the chips, building their own custom, uh, custom specialty chips to fit into the stack. So if you look at Microsoft's news, that relates to the stories here because everyone's showing their chips, right? right. You got, we had Grok, we saw Grok, we saw some other folks here. Everyone sees GPUs with, with NVIDIA, great, get the GPUs, stack them up, do a lot of computation, do some AI, but then building around the GPUs is going to be a big theme going forward. So again, Microsoft validates what we've been saying and seeing here and reporting, and that's going to happen more and more, and then the rest of the big news out of Microsoft is obviously they're related to AI. They got tons of new products. You're seeing AI Copilot. You're seeing a lot of news built into mm -hmm. um, Azure Fabric, AI Studio, Microsoft Powered Copilot. All the AI tools are, are targeting the developers, and I think you know you mentioned the students earlier. Um, yeah. And the set. Those those are the future developers. So the theme about chips, cloud, developers. Dave Nicholson, our analyst, who's usually on the segment, is on a call with his students now. He mentioned them, them yesterday. Yeah. They're the ones who are going to solve the problem. So you're starting to see this generational shift. So to me, the big story is continuing to be chips meets cloud, everything gets in between, gets disrupted and innovated, but it's a generational shift, Savannah. This is what we've been yeah. seeing. It's young and old. So yeah. from the dorm room to the boardroom, as you're seeing innovation, People our age, my age, and that have systems background are getting involved, this community here. You see all the old, the old boomers are still here. You got the young guns, and it's just, it's a cool environment. It's a, tr it's a true melting pot. And okay. AI is like the fountain of technology youth. And I think that to me is uh, what's the big story, continues to be the infusion of AI, the enthusiasm, yeah. uh, the opportunities, and people building as fast as possible so there's confidence. Yes. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree. Key. I love that you brought up the age thing. I actually saw on the show floor yesterday a book called Quantum for Babies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's not even just the dorm room. I guess we're going all the way to the cradle. Cradle to grave. Yeah, yeah. Cradle from, to grave. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's end to end here, and, and there's that many people excited about a lot of things. On the note of, of chips and AI, interesting announcement. I, I love that I'm scooping our, our own outlet. Shout out to the team back at the ranch at SiliconANGLE. Intel disclosed that Aurora managed to run an AI model with one trillion parameters using only 64 of its 10,000 servers. That's amazing. So we're able to, yeah. to run a lot of models, do a lot of complex ca calculations at scale. Yeah. 
that's really exciting. It's everything from climate science to, to genome sequencing, and, and it's so fun that we've had so many conversations. Have you had any dialogues, Lisa, either with guests or just in the hallways or after, after the event that have really struck you? Anything got you extra excited? I think I, I, what I love talking about is with some of these startups who are in their They've been working for a while, they're seeing the market dynamics, the market changes, they're seeing, yeah. they're, and they're listening to customers in terms of this is what we need to do mm -hmm. in order to deliver new products and services, differentiate ourselves, stay ahead of the competition. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always l appreciate talking with new companies, I get to do that again today, understand what it, did you see from a vision perspective or gap in the market perspective, from an HPC perspective, yeah. AI perspective, enterprise AI, that you knew that's a problem, we can solve it, and so there's a lot of innovation going on, and as John pointed out yesterday, it's, it's overnight. You know, it's everything yeah. is real time these days, yeah. and it has yeah. to be yeah. for every industry, whether we're talking about healthcare yeah. and saving lives or financial services or manufacturing, yeah. it has to be Yeah, the one, the one thing um, I haven't seen much talk of, and it's kind of implied, but it's not front and center, is security. Um, yes. And if you remember, there's a, a couple of years ago they had that so-called news that was turned out to be fake, but there was a supply chain hack in the hardware and Amazon was accused of having vulnerability from the back door from mm -hmm. the Chinese and Russians, and so that comes up a lot. So we don't, we're not seeing a lot of security conversations on theCUBE. I know when I talk to the Dell folks, um, um, they're hardcore on the security, um, and, and they have that built into their gear. So I think, is it a good thing that we're not having a security conversation? Because it, is it okay, or is it getting overplayed by the hype of the AI? So, uh, that's what the one thing I would say I haven't seen a lot of emphasis on is what's the security angle, specifically the silicon and the hardware. Yeah. That's going to be an area that's going to be targeted. Yeah, I think that's actually, I, I think that's a, a really good point. I mean, and, and we could, we're, not, I, we're not hearing as many, I know I'm obsessed with it and I say it every day, but we're not hearing as many conversations about quantum as we were, yeah. say, last year. And I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, John. I think it is that, that the conversation and the excitement from the crowd is so loud right now around AI, and it's such a, a, a great use case for all of the hardware buzzing in this building that I think that's just been where yeah. people have focused their energy and their words. I, I, I do think that it very much matters. We're going to have more data to secure than ever. These models are going to be looking at things that are very sensitive when they are learning and, and doing these computations for researchers or whatever their application is. So it is going to matter. I just yeah. think, I mean, we talked about security a lot in Chicago last week at yeah. CNCF, but I think this is, I think it's just not as uh, sexy of a conversation. The, well, the new, there's news out there, so Intel had a, a vulnerability. Uh, they just patched a bug effectively virtually all modern Intel CPUs that lets code run inside the VM that crashes the hypervisor, a risk to all the cloud providers. Huge issue. So it's out there. So these zero days are out there. You have vulnerabilities. Um, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, it's never going to go away, but it's no. data driven. That's where I think AI can come into play. So again, all of our other CUBE events we go to, it comes up that security will be helped by AI because of the data involved. So you know, I think that's one piece. Uh, Savannah, the other thing that's interesting in the news I want to get you your thoughts on is, is that um, OpenAI and ChatGPT, since their dev day, shut down re new registrations mm. because of demand. And they, can't, they don't have the capacity. Wow. They need high performance computers. So that highlights two things. One, HPC meets AI. Mm -hmm. And two, the, the potential impact to sustainability. Yes. Which is a big part of the conversation here. Yes, we had Let's talk folks about on it. here yep, we were talking, talking about, about that. So that yeah. to me is like, that's going to be a big discussion. You know, how much power is being used yeah. by all these new open source models right. and who's got a good solution and where does it end? We mm -hmm. talked a little bit yesterday about the, the, the vision of sustainable AI with Dell and I think Denver DataWorks and it's something yeah. that's absolutely not only on their radar but they're actively working towards yeah. it because you bring yeah. up a great point. You talked about ChatGPT shutting down new registrations because of capacity. That's all, what, one of the main major themes we're talking about here is capacity. Yeah. But looking at it from a sustainability perspective it's going to be absolutely critical. You did that interview. We also yeah. did one with Dell and at North. Correct. Again, the Nordic angle there. Yeah. With That's going to have to be a solution. Yeah. I mean, 
Well, it's interesting to see it, 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 that dialogue was particularly interesting. So in terms of the sustainability, not only is that a problem because we're talking about an incredible amount of power required, but it was cool to get the take of a Nordic company on this. That's another thing that's a big theme here. It's very global. There's a lot of different players from all over the world, not, not only just of different ages and from different backgrounds, but talking to, to At North from the Nordics, it, a historically sustainable place. There's a lot of renewable energy, so it's front of mind for them. And I thought it was so easy to digest and such a great illustration of how you can take the, the, the warm water from liquid cooling and they're using it to heat homes in Denmark. Yeah, that's amazing. And that is, it really shifted my thinking around it, because I think when we think about sustainability, I'm still thinking in the back of my mind like, yeah, right guys, it's still a server farm out there somewhere sucking sure. a, a right. metric. Right, F ton of power, and uh, and the reality is like that. That's just the truth. That's one of the biggest challenges. I love hearing examples like that. Yeah, because that truly does make it a full ecosystem and makes this a holistic movement rather that's than it. just some run for tech money. No, that's it. It's an ecosystem. Yeah. I mean, the thing about this ecosystem is going to look a lot, a lot like cloud. So what's interesting is the, this whole. I won't say full stack, but from from the silicon infrastructure, <laughs> bare metal, you know, hardware to the app is going to be the innovation. What's interesting in some of the conversations where they talk about composability, de disaggregation, these are concepts that kind of bring back the on-premises kind of old school data center thinking in a new way. So you're seeing a lot of kind of the old traditional enterprise suppliers get totally stoked because they're like, they know that world. Now it's not yesterday's data center, it's a new architecture. So, and it's not taking away from the cloud growth. So there's some interesting power dynamics in the industry going on around cloud growth, are people taking their cloud workloads and bringing it back on premise? That's called repatriation. Mm -hmm. That data is not actually in our numbers. Dave Vellante has got great data from the Cube Research that show that there's not a lot of repatriation, but there's a lot of net new build out on premises and edge. That's going to come from the AI build out and that's why NVIDIA is such the darling right now with the, with the GPU. So okay, if that's going to happen, what happens next? We're going to have some other vendors on early, HPE and others going to talk about what that means for the customer. It's going to be a multi-vendor world, multi-chip world. Multi-cloud. Multi-cloud. Multi-everything. And with super computing, you got super cloud, super app, super chips. It's super. Super exciting, Savannah. It, it is just super here on theCUBE, as <laughs> usual. Speaking of super things, you know, I, I'm curious, I didn't notice a llama walking to set today like we did yesterday. Did uh, you see any? I did, actually. <laughs> you did? I saw it on the corner, and I said hello to the llama and the grok folks. The um, llama's still here. Yeah, I got a photo. Ah! <laughs> I Pull it up, John. We'll get an okay. ISO on that. Okay. That's fun. That's very. I love it. I, I missed I'm it. A little, I, I'm honestly a little jealous. The next segment. Oh my gosh. The next segment that I. Ah, that's it's, fantastic. It's, the next segment that I have. And uh, it's giving me a look I'm, too. Side eye. Oh, you got a side eye. That's from the a llama. nice grin. I think that's a super <laughs> warm good morning welcome to to the world. No. Llama is. Agree. <laughs> agree. Happy llama. Oh, I love it. You know, we, you know, you know, it's a hot market when you got nice things like llamas and some all these kind of like attention gimmicks out there to get people's attention. Very clever by yeah. Brock. I think that was such a good call. Uh, well, I give, and we talked about give how props hard to them. It's good. It's a good, yeah. good, good play there. This community is hard to market to. That's one of the conversations that we've had. To these folks really definitely see the see through the hype and and really are looking for application. And I think yeah. that's yes. why to your earlier great yes. point, Lisa, that that's why we see so many projects that are actually being realized. I mean. Yes. Uh, it's unfortunate folks yeah. can't see it back home, but I can see it in, in, in iShot right behind you. There are actually published research papers yes. and yeah. diagrams, yes. so this really is the intersection of research yeah. and enterprise. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's just well, we got a great day lined up. We have uh, Kimberly coming back on from Broadcom and Steen Graham from Scalers AI, hot company. Um, and then we're going to have CMO come in from Volter. We're going to have Renu Raman, it was a stealth company, but yeah. now we can disclose it's Teresa. Awesome. He's into this whole, specialty cloud vision. Uh, we're going to hear from him. He's been a thought leader on that. And we got Dell coming back on. We'll talk about high, high HCI, hyper, hyperscale, hyperscale like infrastructure coming to the enterprise. Uh, Dell should do very well on this new trend of this new revitalized uh, renaissance on the, on the, yeah. in the data center. Um, and then just, just a great day of continuing to bring people in. Uh, IBM's going to come in here. We're going to have TAC come in. Yep. Tommy from TAC, who was at the community event that Dell put on. They got a real, strong view of the future of AI, so looking forward to hearing from that, but yeah. just another great day in paradise. Yeah, the University great, of Cambridge is here as well. It is a well. great day in paradise, and John, can you remind us, how do you feel about Dell? <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very impressed with Dell. Um, <laughs> the moves they're making, um, great products, 
<laughs> Dell has survived we love Dell. I'm not every laughing. single transformation. <laughs> when the web came, they were mail order, and since mail was going away, they became dominant on the web, and I'm expecting them to be dominant with AI. So we'll see, Savannah. <laughs> we'll see, and we'll I, can't wait. I can't wait for the conversations we all get to yeah. have today. John and Lisa, thank you so much for joining me here in Denver, and thank all of you for tuning in to our four days of coverage live from Denver, Colorado. We're here at Supercomputing 2023. My name's Savannah Peterson, and you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.